So if you sit in the UCAT, as you may well know, from time to time it changes. So here I'm going to make a video for if I was to sit the UCAT in 2023, exactly what I would do and how I would approach it to make sure that I get into the top one or two deciles to make sure I get a place at the most competitive medical schools. So this video is gonna serve more as a directory of the resources that I would use today that still hold up and maybe some of the ones that I wouldn't use as much and maybe wouldn't serve you as well today. You may well know that I run a program now that for the last however many years has been helping people get into those top two deciles. So here is basically a very short postcard version of how I help my students and kind of where I direct them to make sure that they get the kind of scores that are gonna help them get into medical school. The first thing we're gonna look at is the approach. Now, as you may well know from this video here where I give you a really robust plan for how to prepare for the UCAT, I talk about the three phases of, of how you prepare for the UCAT. So the first one is familiarization. So make sure you get a really good resource that is going to give you all the fundamentals that you need to score well. So you want something that is gonna take you through all the question types, give you all the possible ways to do it and effectively remember that the UCAT, the two things that you need to optimize for are accuracy and speed. So you want a resource that's going to help you give you the most time efficient and just correct techniques for answering those questions the best that you can. Now the best resource that I know that I've spent years developing is this 20 hour course of UCAT prep which I have here and you can check out the video for here and also on our one-on-one -on -one coaching program we help people individually and sit down with them and look at technique you know when you see a certain question what comes up what goes through your head and what should be going through your head to make sure that you are fast and accurate as i say so if you want to find out more about that you can check that out here but let's talk about the individual sections and how i would prepare for each of them to make sure that i get the best score so once you've done that first phase the second phase is practice questions so Firstly, I would recommend starting untimed and just keep going until you are getting about 80% correct untimed. With that, I would recommend taking one section at a time. The analogy that I always use is of spinning plates. So when a magician spins plates, what they do is they first focus on one plate, put loads of intense prep into that, make sure it's up and running and it can sustain itself, and then they move on to the next one occasionally coming back and giving it a few nudges to make sure that they maintain the speed. And that's exactly the analogy that I would use for your UCAT prep. Start with one, maybe the verbal reasoning, do a lot of intense prep on that, make sure that you get really good at it and then put it on autopilot by moving on to something else and occasionally coming back to make sure you maintain those skills. There's a really good book that I talk about by Greg McEwen called Essentialism and he talks about the difference in progress by spreading your attention across all different areas. So in the circumstance of the UCAT, which is five sections, spreading your attention over five sections and having incremental progress in all of them versus just spreading them in one and just having a much more monumental progress one at a time. So you want to pick one, focus on it intensely, have some, have some really rapid growth, maintain that, move on to the next one. That is how I would approach this for maximum success. Third phase is the intense phase that kind of, that's the place where people worry about burnout and that is what I would call phase three, which is basically becoming exam ready. Now this is where you start timing yourself and making sure that you are reaching that timing that is very, very fast for the UCAT by slowly decreasing the time to increase your speed of progressing through the exam. The number one reason for people not doing well in the UCAT is that they don't complete it. And I always use the analogy, imagine if you make it through the entire exam getting 80% correct on average throughout the entire thing versus getting 100% correct but only making it 70% the way through the exam. What do you think is gonna do better? Obviously the first one of making it through and even though you're not getting everything right, at least you're getting through the entire thing at 80%, that is gonna give you a much better score. If you want to know more about about timing so that's things like how long you should spend in total preparing or how long you should spend in a given session that the best UCAT revision plan video that I made is still the best way that you should prepare and you should kind of use that as a playbook to help you get through that whole UCAT exam so then when we talk about individual sections I'm going to point you to some resources and give you the headlines of what you should focus on to make sure that you improve in each the first one I'm going to talk about is the verbal reasoning that without fail every year is the one that people do the worst in it's always the lowest average and generally the most tricky and the one that people worry about the most. Now for every single section I have done a playlist so 
I will put the playlist for the verbal reasoning one here. But if you want to check out the channel, I would recommend that you go onto all the playlists and you can see each section where I've done a selection of about three or four of the best videos that are going to help you with your preparation for those. And while I mentioned the channel, the best way that you can support us is to subscribe, turn on notifications, and it's in your interest as well because we are purely a medical and dental school application channel. We only do videos that are designed to help you get in and submit the best possible application. Not only that, we will keep you up to date with exactly what you should be doing for each time of the year, keep you up with all of the current news that you need to be aware of during the application. So it's for your own good to subscribe and make sure that you're keeping up to date with all of that. To wrap up the verbal reasoning, like I say, go to that playlist where I expand on these rules, but probably the two most important things that you need to remember are, number one, mastering the targeted read, where you manage to kind of understand what's in the text without actually fully taking the time to read all of it because you don't have time to do that. The second is what I call triaging. Now, triaging means that when you see a, a question come up, you will put it into one of three categories, either short, medium, or long. Now, if it's short, you can read the whole passage because you will have time. If it's too long, I would recommend guessing, flagging, and moving on because you just don't have time to go through such a massive passage. Finally, if you have a medium passage, that's when I would use the targeted read, which I talk about in that playlist. So if you can keep those two rules in mind whilst going through the verbal reasoning, that will give you a really good chance because remember, getting through the thing is just as important as your accuracy. The next section we'll discuss is the abstract reasoning. Now this one is probably the one that has shown the most improvement on. So firstly, it's the one that people struggle with the most, but when they understand how to use the best techniques and get to grips with everything, that's the one where they not only show the most improvement, but recently the abstract reasoning has overtaken the quantitative reasoning as the highest scoring section on the UCAT. So um, I'm seeing a lot of people on my program that when they use some of the techniques that we talk about in the course, that is the thing that kind of helps them click all of a sudden with it and then turn it in from their least favorite to their most favorite section. Then we have the last of the reasonings, the quantitative reasoning, which is all maths. So this is all about your number fluency. The main thing that I will say for this is just remember that maths is just a language Language. So just like anything, if you practice it enough, you will get fluent at it. So practice your numbers, the common things. Again, there's a playlist just to tell you the main equations that you need to remember, the simple mathematical formulae and the kind of level of maths that you need to have to make sure that you go through this quickly. Again, this is a high scoring one. Like I say, until last year, this was the, the, the most high scoring section of the entire UCAT. And it was that way for several years going backwards. It's only recently that it's kind of been overtaken Taken, but usually again another one that people can score well in often one that people start off badly in as well and just by sheer practice and again learning the right techniques can improve in so again playlist there just for that as well so like I said this video is going to direct you to all of the main things that are going to give you the best resources to score highly. Then we have the decision making, which is actually kind of a combination of the quantitative and the verbal reasoning. It's almost married together and it's what we would call the logical component. So what you get is a lot of things like syllogisms where these are kind of like riddles that you have to decipher or you'll get Venn diagrams and there are actually six sections within the decision making that they kind of say that there are only those categories of questions that you might get. So again, on the playlist, we take all of those and tell you exactly how to think about approaching all of those. Then finally, you have the situational judgment test, or the SJT for short, and this is the more ethical conundrum. So it's about your professionalism, your honesty, putting patient safety first, all the things that they want to see, the potential or the ethics or the values that they want to see out of a good doctor. Now this is the only one where it's not numbered 300 to 900, so 300 being the lowest score and 900 the highest for all the other four sections that we talked about. The SJT on the other hand is banded one to four, so band one being the highest, or being the lowest. If you are serious about getting into a competitive medical school, you really need to make sure that you end up in the top two bands. And again, I talk about in a playlist for SJT exactly how you approach these questions, mainly by dividing each answer into, is it a generally good or is it a generally bad? And then once you've got, whether in the, they're in the top half or the bottom half, ways and questions that you can ask to separate whether it's a really good answer or a good but not perfect answer or a really bad answer and really bad or ma not amazing, but also not the worst possible answer. So these are the ways that you can think about branching those answers. And that is gonna be the key to really determining 
in a robust fashion, which is the best way to answer those questions. Now, like I say, you want to be aiming for at least a band two. You can get into medicine with a band three, but it is a lot more difficult. In fact, if you get a low UCAT score, I made this video here where I talk about what to do if you get a low UCAT score and still want to apply for medicine that year. What I see a lot of people do is overestimate the value of the UCAT, but underestimate its difficulty. With a not amazing UCAT score, you can still get into medicine. And we have a lot of people who come to us on the Future Doc program who didn't get the UCAT score they wanted, and then they want advice beyond that for how to basically get in despite that. Now, obviously the best way is if they come to us sooner and get help to get them a really good UCAT score, and then that makes you take control of the application much more, but there are still things that you can do. So I recommend watching that video to give you an idea of what your options are with a not particularly great UCAT score. One of the things that I didn't talk about was the use of mock tests. Now on our program, we're constantly doing mock tests as a cohort where we're doing it together in exam conditions, then breaking, after we're reviewing the answers, breaking them all down, understanding what we did right, what we did wrong, how we can improve our technique. And I would recommend that you do that. On the channel, we also have a, you know, test with me or do the mock with me. So a video there where you can see how you do and then we show you how we go through the answers. But we're doing this regularly on the program and I would recommend that you do the same as well to constantly keep an eye on how you're doing with the test. So in a nutshell, that is exactly how I would go about approaching the UCAT in 2023 and what I would do to make sure that I absolutely smash it to get, like I say, top two deciles is what you're aiming for so that you can take control of the application. If you want to find out exactly how you can get help or maybe what you need to do to be in that top two deciles, check out this video here where we talk about really what are the most important five things to do for your med school application. But I hope you enjoyed this directory. Like I say, this is more to point you in the direction of what to do, but I hope you enjoy the resources and best of luck with your UCAT.